Hello, man. It's an honor to be with you again for our Faithful Men series. Uh, today, we are going to spend some time talking about 1 Samuel 27. Man, we're deep in the 20s now. This thing is coming to an end in 1 Samuel, and uh, we're starting to see, I think, a little bit of uh, David's different personality come through as we're, we're getting ready to get close to the transition where David actually is installed as the king. Uh, but, but 1 Samuel 27 is interesting to me. And what's interesting is, is that we see David on the run again. And I know he's been on the run a lot, but he, he's now making very confused decisions based on where he's going and what he's doing. And so he makes a decision in his own life and for his men and his family that Saul's going to kill him. He, he, he is now resolute in the fact in his mind and in his heart that, that Saul is going to kill him. In fact, in the very beginning of chapter 27, he makes the statement. He knows, he, he basically says, I will succumb to, to Saul, that Saul will kill me. Saul will destroy me. And so he makes a decision that he feels like he should go live amongst the Philistines, who are the mortal enemies of Israel, the mortal enemies of him. He, he killed their leader. If you remember, Goliath was the leader of the Philistines. He killed him. He decides to go live among them. And he, he hides among them. And he becomes almost a servant for them. And he kills for them. And he lies about who he's killing to the, to the leader of this particular town he's at. And it's just not David's best moment. It is not his shining moment. And here's what I would say, and I think as men we do this a lot. We, we create our own futures. In other words, we sign the contract for what we think the future is going to be. I can't tell you how many men that I listen to, and I get the gist of where we are politically in today's world, and especially here in this country, that, that we, we have signed off on the end times. We have signed off on this country is, is going nowhere, that this country is, is destined for doom. And we become these doomsdayers, and we, we basically create the future. And that's what David's done here. Dave, think about this. Here's a guy who's installed and anointed as king, who's been protected by Saul all the way up until this point by God, but still he wants to create a future to say, you know what? God's, uh, Saul's going to kill me. That's just basically what's going to happen. So my question for you is, is in whose promises do you take hold? Do you take hold of the promises of the world, earthly promises, or do you take hold of the promises of God? Because there's where David is. David has now succumbed to the promises of the world as opposed to the promises of God, which God had already communicated to him through Samuel, through other prophets. Remember, David didn't seek out prophets. He did not go and pray for what he should do. He made a decision based on the fact that he had determined his future. And how many of us men sit there and determine our future? We determine that our marriage will never change or our kids will never change or our careers will never change or we'll never make more money or our church will never change or our community or our world or whatever it is. We enter into these places where we think nothing will ever be different. And we don't trust the promises of God. The scripture is full of promises from our Lord and Savior that speak of a hopeful, joyful future, not a despondent, depressing future. What God speaks of is hope. And what God had for David was hope. He needed to persevere through the trials, no doubt. We have to persevere through the trials. He had to look through the pain. We have to look through the pain. He had to make informed decisions based on God's promises. So as a man, are you sitting there today making your decisions for your life based on the future that you, as a man who is broken, just like me, has determined in your own mind and heart, or are you trusting the promises of God? And is the reason you're not trusting the promises of God because you lack faith in a big God? That's the question that it lays upon us here. And that's the question that David had to answer. And right now, David's not answering the question out of faith. He's answering the question out of fear. So do this. Read this. Read it intently and ask yourself this question. Am I a man of faith who relies on the promises of God to create my future? Or am I a man of fear who believes that I am the best one to create my future? I think we know the answer of, of that. I think the issue is, is that we need to apply it. So, hey, you guys are doing awesome. Thanks for spending this time with me. I can't wait to be with you again. 
Keep on keeping on. You're a faithful man, and it's awesome to be with you.